In my last video, I was able to create a graphics library for the Windows console in React OS. Everything I'm doing can be done in Windows, but I'm making my game in React OS in order to demonstrate its maturity and its excellent implementation of the Windows API. My graphics library can load text files and render them like images, and it also has many features to manipulate colors. I want to make a platformer game with this, but first, I need to set up a way to handle user input. I used a Windows API function called Read Console Input, which can be used to get keyboard events, mouse events, and console window resize events, to name a few. The way you actually read events with Read Console Input is strange, because it requires you to allocate a buffer to store some events, and then read them all in chunks by loading them into the buffer and then processing them. I used the display class to act as a wrapper for the event buffer and Read Console Input calls. I made a more simple method called pull event, which gives the events to the user one at a time and returns false if there are no more to be read. Here you can see my event handling in action. You can move the player back and forth with the left and right arrow keys. Despite the resolution being only slightly better than an Android camera, it's amazing that the Windows API has enough functions to make an actual game using only the Windows console. And it's even more amazing that ReactOS re-implements all of these API functions so perfectly. Now that we have a graphics library and a way to handle input, we can start building our platformer game. The first step is to create a game state system so you can have different states, such as a title screen, a pause menu, and the actual gameplay state. I used a modified version of a C++ game state system from a popular article, which I will link in the description. Here you can see the state system in action. The introduction screen just says React OS game, and then after a few seconds, it switches to the gameplay state, which is currently just a red screen full of dollar signs. Game states can handle user input, and the gameplay state uses this to exit the game when the user presses Q. Game states also have update and render functions. The update function allows the state to actually do stuff, such as handle player movement. The render function allows the state to draw stuff onto the screen. Platformers are usually made up of blocks or tiles, such as the bricks in Mario, so I made a two-dimensional vector of integers to represent the blocks in the world. Zero represents air or an empty block, and every other value is a different type of solid block. The player is represented by a rectangle structure with x and y coordinates along with a width and height. And I also made a texture that stores the player sprites, and another texture for the blocks. And the gameplay state has boolean variables that indicate whether or not the up, down, left, and right arrow keys are being held down, and I used the gameplay state's key event handling functions to set those values to true or false appropriately. I also made a function that handles collisions. This can be used to make sure the player or any other type of entity doesn't go through the blocks. Here's what all of this looks like in the game. The player can be moved around with the arrow keys, but he can't go through the walls. This still isn't a platformer yet, so I had to add more physics to the game. I made an extra set of player coordinates, but they're doubles instead of integers. This allows for more smooth movement, because the player can now move slower than one character at a time. You can't draw a sprite halfway between two character positions, so the integer coordinates are used when dragging the player onto the screen. With this more smooth movement, I was able to use acceleration to add gravity and better left and right movement. I also added jumping, which means we now have all the basic ingredients for a platformer game. That's all for now. In my next video for the series, I'll be making this into a 2D sandbox game like Terraria, except with a slightly lower resolution. It won't be quite as amazing as Terraria, but I do plan on adding things like mining resources, fighting enemies, and maybe even multiplayer at some point. As always, the code for this video will be linked in the description.